Hello and welcome to our webinar. Today I'm going to show you how to digitize satin stitches and using the different uh, features that we have available in the Wilcom Embroidery Studio software. Uh, I'm working with the designing package uh, today and I'm going to show you just the different ways that you can uh, digitize satin stitches inside this program. Here I have a little template on the screen here. I'm just going to zoom in by rolling my mouse button forward here. Uh, to digitize satin columns inside this program, uh, there are several different ways that you can do that. If you're using uh, the program and you have the, uh, the, the graphics digitizing tools here, you can use those to digitize columns. And the way that this works, basically, um, you will go in and you would select your digitize closed shape. Once I left click it, I'll make sure that I go up top in my fills and choose satin stitch. And at this point, um, I could go in and I can digitize an object like this letter L and I'm just going to go in and digitize this by following the outline. I'm pressing and holding my control key down to force the software to do a straight line here and when I get to my next to the last point all I have to do is press the enter key on my lower left corner of my screen at this point is asking me for an entry point it wants to know where I want to start stitching my object here and I'm gonna start right here so I'll left click there and once I select my starting point it's asking me for an exit point and here I'll exit here and it fills that area in just like this now with the size that I have here and I'm gonna go in because it is very important for us to size the design before we get started so I'm gonna have to go in and I'll press the shift K on my keyboard to unlock everything. I'll do a control A to select everything and I will uh, change this to we'll make this we'll do it like this. I'll change it to five inches tall. Why not mail it? Let's make it four. There we go. I'll select my graphics only by clicking my graphics tool here and I'll press K to lock those on the screen so that they don't, so that they don't move. And here as you can see I have my object here that was created by me digitizing it. I can select that object, I can navigate to my reshape tool and I can adjust my stitch angle here. I also can go in at this particular point here inside the program I'm um, when I look at this here's my stitch angle I start my stitching here up top and it goes down and it finishes it here now with this particular option here um, once I press my control key down in reshape mode because I've used the digitized closed shape it will not allow me to add an additional stitch angle okay again I can't not add an additional stitch angle by going to reshape mode and pressing my control key down because I've used the closed shape object. Okay. When you're digitizing uh, column stitches, you want to have it in your mind basically where you want to start and where you want to exit as we navigate here to the letter E. And so with this as um, digitizing, I will exit, have my exit point here. Now on this L also, if I want to change this, I can select this and I do have an option to navigate uh, to my complex turning satin stitch here for turning satin um, tatami stitches here. And what this will allow me to do, it will allow me to add stitch angles to this. If I left click here, I can enter a stitch angle here, enter two reference points here. I can enter two reference points here and I can enter two reference points here and press enter 
and that will change that shape just like that okay now looking at the letter E here now what I want you to think about is one where do you want the stitches to end before you get to the letter T here okay and you usually is at the closest point which will be up top here so I want to exit my letter E up to the top here so it has a close join here going to the T but I have a starting position here also because I have uh, one object here which is the uh, main shape here of the letter E and I have my little crossbar here so in order for me to end up here up top I have to finish this first and in order for me to do that I can one select the running stitch and I could run to my inside object like this I'm going to press enter to stop there another tool that I can use to go in and do my satin stitches is I can go in and I can use my column B stitch if I choose column B I can go in and digitize one to the inside go to side two as I left click here and left click there and press enter it fills that in and if I want to end up to the top here as I go to my uh, to the T I can go in and I have a choice here I can use my running stitch which I can now press my space bar I can choose my running stitch which it, it goes back to my running stitch automatically because it remembers what you did last and once I finish that and press enter you'll see my running stitch selected here but as soon as I press space bar it goes back to my column B stitch and here I follow my outline around side A first I'm left clicking then I'll press enter and at this point I can start side B of my contour left click I'm pressing my control key down to force it to do a straight line and once I finish with this I'll press enter and it fills that in just like this now the difference between the column B stitch versus the digitized closed shape is I can go to my reshape tool now and I can press my control key down and I can add stitch angles by putting my cursor on the outline seeing my angle tool and I can go in and I can rotate those angles like this so I can go in and add stitch angles using uh, the column B stitch by again selecting the object going to the reshape tool pressing and holding my control key down moving my cursor on top of the outline till I see my stitch angle tool and just left click like that okay as we scroll over the letter T again you always start with the end in mind mean meaning um, I want to exit here on this letter T so I can use a short stitch possibly to go to the letter I and to do that I'll have to digitize this object first because this one is going to stitch underneath the crossbar so therefore I'll choose my running stitch I'll run underneath I'll press enter to finish and I'll press my space bar and in this particular situation I have a choice to use the column A stitch to do my satin stitches here if I select the column A stitch this lets me work with a point here and I'm pressing my control key down and a counterpoint here side B as I go up left click side A I'll left click also side B here and when I'm done I'll press enter like this I can press my space bar and run to this side press my space bar again and with my column A stitch again side A and side B I go across side A and side B once I'm finished I'll press enter and it will fill that in just like we see it there okay as we do the, the letter I now here uh, we can go in um, I need to exit up at the top because I want a, a short connection here in case I want to join those later 
Again, I'll choose a run. I'll run down to the bottom. I'll press enter to stop. And then I'll press my space bar. It goes back to my column A stitch. I'll left click here, left click side B, left click side A, and left click side B here. I'll press enter. Okay. Now you have options with the uh, column stitches as you go in and with this particular object here the stitch type that I want to select to do this would be uh, I want to go in and I want to do the column B stitch for this okay the shapes are very simple I can start to the outside like this as I start digitizing this and I will left click here again I'm doing the outside first before I do the inside once I finish this I'll press enter now I can go to the side B or to the inside and I'll do all of those at once just like this following my shape I'll press enter and this is what we have now keep in mind that using the column B stitch we do have access to the reshape tool and I can click on my reshape tool if I need to add stitch angles all I've got to do is press my control key down in reshape mode and I can see my stitch angle tool and I can grab this and point that to a corner like this and I can do the same for this one here changing the angle of the fill like this so you do have the ability to go in and adjust and change the stitch angles again by going into reshape mode pressing the control key down left clicking and of course you can adjust that angle just like this okay because I click here as we move to the letter O now here is an option that if you're digitizing something uh, you can go in and you can digitize your letter O and one good way of doing this is actually doing one 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 half of it first and then uh, copying it or duplicating it what I mean by that is this at this point here um, I can choose my column B stitch if I'm going to start digitizing here I'll right click on the inside here once I finish this here I'll press enter and then I will do the outside of this and I'm right clicking I'm going to press enter so this uh, fills that side in now at this point here I could click on my select tool to select that object I can press control D on my keyboard and I can flip this horizontally by navigating here to my couple tools here using my arrow key at three o'clock and moving that in, into space like this now here I can press S just to make sure I'm gonna hide the vector image in the background making sure that everything matches here so I'll go to my reshape tool and make sure that I overlap those outlines because I don't want anything to come back I don't want to see the fabric on the, other, on the other side of it here so I'll have to close those gaps up like you see here okay I'll press shift tab to go backwards so if I'm gonna start stitching here up top and I have an exit point here at the bottom once I press tab I want to start where the exit stitch ended to avoid a trim and if I wish to either put the exit point here at the bottom I can put the exit point here at the bottom and have it stitched this way I'm going to navigate up top here again and I'll choose my show vectors okay so as we if you're digitizing an object you know this is this is what you do if you had to digitize an object well what do we do when we have uh, cursive fonts like we have here on the bottom okay what I want you to look at is 
if you're digitizing something, all of the guides here, these are stitch angles. Okay. And the difference between this object and this text here is that the stitch angles here are invisible. Okay. But you still have to use those stitch angles in order to get this to stitch correctly. And what I mean by that is this. I'm going to zoom into this. If I'm going to digitize the letter B here, if I'm going to use my column B stitch here, I could go in, I could start here, and this B is split up into two separate objects here also. So as I digitize, I'm right clicking, right clicking. As I finish this, I'll press enter, and then I'll do side B like this. Right clicking, creating my outline shape here, left click here, and once I press enter, it's going to fill that in. Okay, same thing here on the inside, just like this. As I'm right clicking, and as you're digitizing, I'm going to press enter here, and then go to the outside like this. And as I'm working on this, as I'm digitizing it, just think about the stitch angle and where that needs to be. Okay, and that's using the column B stitch, and it has no guidelines here. It has no stitch angles here. Also, I can go in. I can click on my reshape tool. I can press my control key down, and I can add stitch angles like this, forcing it to turn like the hands on the clock. To better control the machine. Just like that here. Left clicking here, adding the stitch angles. Just like that. Okay, and that's how you would go in and digitize the letter B. Okay. Now, when you look at it, when you're going in and you're digitizing uh, your lettering, remember that uh, some letters, they have to be split up into two or more objects in order to get them to work. Like the R here. The R here has to be split up into one, two, three objects here in order for it to work. Okay, So here, um, when you're looking at these stitch angles here, these are just stitch angles again that the sewing machine will use to uh, create this, uh, this, this text with. And so now, if I choose to use the column A stitch for this, I could go side A, side B, side A, side B, and side A, and side B, and press enter. Okay? The next one, I could go side A, side B, right clicking here for a curve, right clicking here for the curve, here and here. And once I'm finished, I'll press enter there. The next one I'll start here, outside, inside, just like this. And these are stitch angles here that I'm looking at based on how the machine is going to stitch these out. That's what I'm looking at here. And I'll press enter. Okay. As we continue with this, with the letter A, I just want you to think about, you know, again, how the machine is going to stitch this out. And at this point here, um, for this one, if I'm going to go in, again, you can choose the column B stitch here as well. And you can start with the column B stitch on the inside, like this. And when you do the column B stitch, remember, you do the one side first, you press enter, and then you do the other side. That's what the column B stitch type uses. Once I get to the end of this, now I'll press enter and I'll do side two or side B like this. And all of this is great practice for you if you're still learning how to go in and how to digitize objects. I'll press enter here 
again, when you use the column B stitch, because it doesn't come with stitch angles, I'll have to press H to go to my reshape tool with this. And press my control key down, and here I can add my stitch angles. It just fixes everything when you go in and add the stitch angles like this. Even here, adding my stitch angles, turning, turning, controlling the machine more like this. I'm having pressing my control key down as I'm controlling it, just like this. And that's what it looks like. And at one to one, if I press my number one key, this is what it looks like at one to one. Okay. As we continue with this, again, we could continue with the column B stitch. Now we also have, um, you have an option also to use a complex turning stitch here also, as long as you select the satin stitch. And again, whether this works, it works with the entire outline. Once I go here, I can follow that outline because I've elected to choose the turning satin stitches. I press enter here on my prompt bar on the lower left corner. It says enter point one of boundary two. I don't have a hole that I'm going to put in there. So here I'll just go in and do my exit point and here I'll, I'll do my stitch angles like this and like this and press enter and it fills it in okay as we continue again uh, we have our column A stitch press enter here for this one I mean, it just depends on which one of these tools that you that you like to use? I would try each of them to see which one uh, uh, suits you better. Actually, uh, one that's quick, easier to use for you is what I would do for this. Now, if I'm going to use the column A stitch for these turns, this is how I'll do it. I'll start here. Again, this is the column A stitch, and for the column A stitch, you as you digitize, you're creating the stitch angle at the same time. So here, when I go in, I'm right clicking everything here because these are turns. There are no straight lines. Just like the hands on the clock, they turn. Always going to go closest distance across. And one, and one. And once I press enter, now you see when I press my reshape tool now, all of my node points are already in there and I can go in and I can edit them by moving them. I'm going to press S to hide the stitches and I'm also going to click on the vector to hide the vectors. So this is what we have here and as I zoom into this we have the capability of going in moving the node points here in order to improve the shape of the object like this. Okay, You can always go in, you can move, edit, the shape of the objects in order to increase the the view of them actually so they have a nicer view just like this and I'm going to press S here and I'm going to click to add the vector tool back on the screen here again and last but not least you have the letter S and we'll start this one here uh, using the column A stitch point counterpoint right click here for a curve left click here for now we'll start here right clicking right clicking turning turning the stitch angle here like the machine here and there and gonna press enter last but not least we'll go in and again with the column A stitch the one thing about the column A stitch that I love is that it puts the stitch angle in it at the same time and I don't have to go back and add or in, add another stitch angle to it. Okay. And let's see how this is going to stitch out. I'm going to hide the vector. I'm going to select this. And I'm going to adjust the fills here for the, my fills here on 80% here. And let's do a 
stitch player as it goes in. We can add underlay stitches after the fact. Right now, I'm just I want you to see just the how to approach uh, actually digitizing the object first. We can always go back and add the underlay stitch to it, but just the the timing and the order in which they stitch is very important. So go up, turns, and here's our O. Again, the placement of the objects on the work page are crucial because that's going to control also the uh, stitching order, the sequence. Go here as it goes in, as it stitches this, following the path. All right, I'm going to click stop here. And that is going to do it for this uh, class here on uh, choosing the column stitches to digitize. And we'll continue with this uh, more in depth in a, in a later class. Uh, thanks for joining me. I hope you learned something uh, in this class today. We ask that you visit us at www.willcomeamerica.com for information on training schedules information on downloads, updates, and things of that nature. Thank you so much. Have a good day.